come on to now is, is the next concept we're going to look at, which is resistivity. So resistivity is quite distinct from resistance. It's, it's related to resistance, but it's material specific. So uh, resistance can is, is just the resistance to the, the flow of current, um, and it can be caused by anything. It can be caused by trying to flow through a material, through a device, any shape or structure. Whereas the idea of resistivity is if, if we want to compare the, the intrinsic ability for a particular material to conduct electricity, we, we need something to, um, to parameterize that. So um, you might have the, the intuitive sense that things like copper um, can be very good conductors and things like glass are very poor conductors. But if you change the shape of them, you get different resistances. So I'm just going to make a, a demonstration of that. <coughs> Here, using um, Play Doh. So, uh, Play Doh is actually really useful for doing resistance measurements because it's one of the few things that are easily available that, that have a resistance that's measurable on, on a standard multimeter. Right? Most things you might find around the house or in shops or anything, um, the resistance is either too high or too low to be able to measure properly. Um, whereas Play Doh kind of sits nicely in the middle of the range of resistances that it can measure. Um, so, I'm just going to show you here what resistance we measure. So, we've got this multimeter. You've set it on here to, to resistance. You get a, a load of different ranges here. So you can measure um, from down a, a 200 ohm scale up to a 200 mega ohm scale. Um, so I'm just going to roll this into a ball. And this is our ball of Play Doh. And I'm just going to see what resistance we can measure here. So I'm just going to put the probes to the side. So that's showing we've got a resistance of about 14 and a half kilo ohms. Showing there. So what I'm going to do is take that same play doh and change the shape of it. Just going to roll it out. So we've got here exactly the same material. And now I'm going to measure the resistance of it. So I need to switch up the scale. <laughs> so you see now it's gone up to about 60 kilo ohms. Right? 63. So we've got a really big increase in the resistance we measured just by changing the shape. Because right? when we had the ground lump, that's, that's easy to go through. We've got um, a relatively short distance for carriers to travel, for electrons to go through, and they've got a relatively big cross-sectional area for them to go through. As we roll it out thin, then we've got a long distance for them to go and quite a small cross-section for it to try and get through. So, as we'd expect, we get a higher resistance. But the idea of resistivity is we want a number that's specific to a particular material that tells us how good it is at conducting electricity. But um, just measuring the resistance isn't good enough because we can get completely different measurements of resistance depending on the shape of the thing we're trying to measure the resistance of. So how can we then compare the resistance of different materials? So we could measure a cube of the same size. So we could 
say, okay, for all of these different materials that I want to compare the resistances of, I'm going to measure, get a cube exactly the same size and, and measure that. So we did that, then you now we could get our cube that's got some particular size and connect it up to a circuit so we can apply a voltage and measure the current and get the resistance of that cube. So we say that the resistance of this cube is this thing we call resistivity. So this thing we call resistivity, that is the material specific resistance that we can make a comparison between different materials on. So it's given the symbol rho, and we usually say it's for one cubic centimeter cube. So a cube is one centimeter on size. So that, that is our, our definition of, of resistivity. So it's the resistance of a particular cube, usually a, a one centimeter cube. <coughs> so now if we imagine we've got this cube and we stack two cubes end on end, so we double its length, then <coughs> the resistance of that cube will now be double. Right. So we've got electrons trying to go through this cube. If we stack two of them end on end, they've got to go through this centimetre of material. And now in this, in this part, we've got to go through another centimetre of material. So doubling the length will, will double the resistance. And then if we take two cubes and stack them side by side, then now electrons that are trying to get through here, they can go through this opening here, so it's the cross-sectional area that determines how, how easily they can go through a surface front. If we stack two of them side by side, then the electrons can either go this way or this way. So we'd expect that to half the resistance. So if we double the cross-sectional area, then we will half the resistance. So we can now come up with an equation that relates resistance and resistivity. So we've got our resistivity, which is the, the resistance of this cube, then the resistance will be then resistance to that cube multiplied by the length and divided by the area. And then we could rearrange that equation then in terms of resistivity. And then if we measure the resistance and we know the area and the length of something, then we can get the resistivity. And we can also check the units as well. So if we look at the units we got here, we've got resistivity is resistance times area over length. Resistance is in units of ohms. Area which is in units of centimetres squared, and length is in units of centimetres. So that gives us resistivity in units of ohm centimetres. And it's, it's slightly counterintuitive that like a material-specific um, parameter would have units of ohm centimetres, but it's, it's just coming about from the, the dimensionality of cross-section and length. Right, it's just because cross section is in units of centimeters squared, length is um, length is in units of centimeters. So it just works out what we end up with ohm centimeters for the units. And it doesn't it doesn't actually matter. We don't we don't actually have to um, calculate resistivity from stacks of one centimeter cubed. Right, this this equation holds for for any shape. The the, the only thing. <laughs> that we need to um, follow is a constant cross-section. So this equation is um, valid for anything with a constant cross-section. So you know, if we had some material that had a circular cross-section, any particular area, and then any particular <laughs> length, 
Right, if we know this cross-sectional area, and we know this length, then we can plug that into the equation, we measure its resistance, and get the resistivity. And as long as we've got the same material, we could have any shape we like. Right, any shape, cross-section, any cross-sectional area, any particular length, As long as that's the same material, if we plug in those numbers, the resistance that we measure, the cross-sectional area, and the length, then that will give us our resistivity. So it should be the same as long as we've got the same material. At the same temperature, that is. So material resistance will often change the temperature. So it's, it's something that's specific to a material at, at a particular temperature. Okay, let's have a go 